On today's show, Luka Doncic goes down with an injury. How will the Mavs respond if he misses significant time? But Spencer Dinwiddie responds with a huge, huge game. How big was this game for the Mavericks? We'll tell you that more on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks. don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Even though Luca was hurt, mm. Mavs get the win. I, I feel it's appropriate to let it ride. Oh, you're testing fate right now. Thanks for making Lockdown Maps your first listen each and every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms, including YouTube. The best way you can help us grow the show, listen every day, and comment anything below. Let us know what's one reason the Mavericks won this game. Dwight Powell's rebounding. Whoa. Spencer Dinwiddie going off. Josh Green's hustle, all kinds of stuff. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. Joining me, as always, my co-host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The doctor dude, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? The weird thing about this Luka injury is there's so many other things that happen to Luka that <laughs> feels like it's so much worse. That I know. I'm watching, and I'm, you know, there's a reaction, there's a quick reaction, there's him fall down, like all these different things every that happen t- to him all the time. time. And I'm like, oh, is this the one? And he's, you know, he's fine. Two minutes later, this one didn't even look bad. And this is the one that makes him it's the, the classic game. boy who cries wolf thing, right? Where like the boy cries wolf, there's no wolf, and then the boy cries wolf again. No wolf. Boy cries wolf, and no one believes him, and then the sheep all get eaten. <laughs> like, Luca, injury? No, he's good. Injury? No, he's good. The, we, we like, flame the announcers for always falling for it. Like, oh, Luca Doncic with the injury. If he'll have to miss time yep. in this game, and we're like, he'll be fine. He'll come back. And then he steps on somebody's foot, and all of a sudden he's out of the game. So we'll talk about that. We'll break that down. What would, it, what would happen if Luca Doncic does miss time? And all that. Then we'll break down the Mavs game. Mavs beat the Suns in Phoenix again. Gotta love it every time. I Kurt. mean, it's not like they haven't beaten them before. <laughs> Shout out to the Suns fans, you know, reminiscing on losing in, on their home court. Um, would it be appropriate to send everyone to Locked On Suns? If you listen to this podcast, go to Locked On Suns. <laughs> uh, leave Hi, a Brendan. comment. Brendan. Leave a comment um, <laughs> saying, hey, go Mavs. Um, you know, at Be least nice. it's just say go Mavs. At least they didn't lose by 33 on their home court in game seven of a playoff series. That would be acceptable 60, to say as well. <laughs> 60 games in a regular season. At least it wasn't that bad tonight. You know, that's true. Hey, it could be worse, Suns fans. Um, all right, let's get into this. Luka Doncic goes down. They're calling it an ankle sprain they're calling it that we didn't get their x-ray was negative so there's no like d- like damage or anything to it so we're trying to figure out there's no like significant damage to it but we're trying we don't know exactly how long he's going to be out i reached out to our doctor friend brian suterer great youtube channel covering sports injuries all the time uh and he said he's like i know they're calling it an ankle sprain but i really would have thought foot sprain just looking at it like he's an md that looks at these kind of injuries all the time and said you know, I wouldn't have th- thought that this was an ankle sprain. So it'd be interesting to see if they change this and, you know, it becomes something else later. But um, I think that I, I think we just don't know. Like, we just don't know anything. This could be a week. This could be a month. This could, could be anything. Could be Patrick Mahomes where it looks awful. And then all of a sudden he's back for like the next week. I mean, who knows what could happen with an injury. But let's just go off of the, the idea that it's an ankle sprain. Okay. He'll he miss like a, a couple weeks. How do the Mavericks respond then? How do they adjust if Mm. they can? I mean, some would say the stretch would define the season. Um, I would be one of those. (laughs) uh, No, (laughs) I'm not one of those. Um, But I mean, yes, you one, you said it while ago. At this point, we're recording this at 1215 a.m. on 
Friday morning. I was going to say Thursday night. Yeah, but, Thursday uh, night into Friday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't know anything yet. No. So there's we literally there's no clue on is this a couple of games, couple of weeks, a month. Like we we have no clue right now. So nope. you're at you know we have to ask the question. Okay, what they did tonight against Phoenix is that sustainable? <laughs> Does this push up the trade urgency? Um, do they try to bring in some more help here uh, right now? Is it time um, to tank, Isaac? Stop! Come on. No. I saw that take soon as soon as Luca went down. I saw that take, and I just want to say that is so ridiculous. Like, <laughs> think to just like let's just throw the season away. Let's do a, like let's this was do online. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very online. Uh, just ridiculous. Like the, the amount of losing they'd have to do, and what they would like the the workload they'd have to do to get to where it would even be worth it for them to do something like that would be ridiculous. And then to to dig themselves out of that kind of hole next year it would be so hard because you have to sell off pieces you'd have to lose a bunch you'd have to i mean it would just be I mean, it's so irresponsible to yeah to do i something mean like the, that. The, well yeah i mean i think the only way you entertain that is if luca if luca tore something is out, of the, out, for, is the out for the season yeah, something an like that. ankle sprain. Like, i mean we're talking an ankle sprain but like you go back to last year though i mean look look what happened last year you know luca you know, tweaks his ankle a little bit. They lose some, you know, they lose some games, but yep. they actually have a decent stretch when Luca's out. I mean, if you get online back then, people were saying the same thing. So, <laughs> I mean, people were saying that before Luca's injury. There's a portion of Mass fans that would be in our comments every day saying, "Why are we celebrating the win? We should tank for Wimby." Yeah, it's like, they'll, they'll it's be just, here. They'll be here today too. It's just kind of part of of fandom, but I would, you know, let. You can't assume anything, but let's just see how long it takes, and let's see, let's see what changes for Dallas. Do they? Does the urgency go up to try to push? You know, let's just, let's say it. They're like, hey, he's going to be out to the All Star break, you know, or or the trade deadline or something like that. It's like, does that make them want to pull the trigger on something sooner? Um, can Spencer Dinwiddie? I mean, we're going to talk Ooh. about him more on this podcast, but can he play continue at this level? So. We know what this team is uh, around Luca. We don't know how long he's going to be out. Let's say it is an ankle sprain. He's out two weeks. Okay, that takes him through. They have a game against uh, at the Jazz, home for the Pistons, home for the Pelicans, and then they start a road trip at the Warriors, at the Jazz, at the Clippers, two games at the Kings, and then that's essentially two weeks right in the middle of that back-to-back against the Kings, both in Sacramento. Um so th- what they have to do is they I don't know if they can play a game like they did tonight. That you got to find some more bodies, right? Christian Woods well, Christian should, Woods um, Christian Woods should, should, be. should be coming back soon. That's going that's going to be huge. Um they can't they, you can't not play Hardy, right? Like that's a, that's a small thing that we're going to talk about maybe a little bit later is that I don't think they can get away with All right. If Dinwiddie's not on the floor, then Frank Nilakina is our point guard. <laughs> mm. Like Nico, I understand that people forget about Frank. Like I get mm. that, but you, you, they have this. Like this is now. <laughs> this is now. We need somebody that can score some points when Dinwiddie's not on the court. And so that's what that's what I'd be interested to see if if Luca does miss extended time. What changes with Jaden Hardy? Do the Mavericks change something about their offense? They didn't tonight. They pretty much play the same offense that they've been playing. It's it's one player. Everybody get out of the way. Maybe a little ball movement on swing passes after that player goes off, and then they get doubled a bunch. Right, like that had been their offense. I'm curious to see if they change anything with it. If well, if Luca does miss a, a, a extended stretch, coming up next, let's talk. About, I want to mention something about the trade market real quick. Um, depending on the length of Luca being out, how big was this game for the Mavericks? We'll talk about that coming up. Before we do, let me tell you about LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs will help you post your job, help you find a job if you're a job seeker, help you post a job and find the right candidates that you want if you're a hiring manager. You know that your team has to be great. You know that if your team is going to go on a retreat, like Isaac took his his day job, he took you took your your guys on a retreat and went to like visit another business. You don't want to be embarrassed by any of the people that you take. You want to know nope. that those people are going to be the best qualified candidates that represent your company the best. LinkedIn Jobs helps you attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They have over 875 million member profiles. So go check out LinkedIn Jobs right now. It's easy to screen rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn 
dot com slash locked on NBA. That's LinkedIn dot com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Isaac Harris, we are talking about Luka Doncic. He only plays three minutes and 21 seconds into this game. Uh, scores zero points, by the way, which now he's second in the NBA in scoring per game, if that's something that you care about. I don't think Luka does, but... Uh, but now what What will the Mavericks do if he is out for an extended period of time? The trade The trade market now. Trade deadline is coming up. I mean, that we are... If Luka Doncic does miss two weeks, he will be out until after the trade deadline. So how does that change anything for the Mavs? Yeah, I think if it's something shorter, I think if they say, hey, he's day-to-day, yeah. um, or hey, he's, he's going to miss the game in Utah, we're going to reevaluate when we come back home for the Detroit game. Right. Um, you know, I think if it's something like that, I think it's just, hey, we'll just make do, or a few games like that. If they come out and say, hey, we're going to reevaluate him in three weeks, um, two weeks, something like that. After the All-Star break would be three weeks. Yeah, I it wouldn't shock me if we see a move pretty soon of just because I mean you see the variance of you know going from a top five team in the West or top six team in the West to be able, you know dropping down to where like Portland's at. Um so if if they if they came out and said, Hey, Luca's gonna be out two or three weeks, it could be uh D'Angelo Russell, Mike Conley, Terry Rozier time <laughs> in Dallas. The Mavs are a half game out of fourth. So if they win a game and nobody else plays, then they will be they will be tied for fourth in the West. If and then they are uh, two games out of eleventh where the Blazers are right now. So it is like you know they are right there. <laughs> like either way, the West is so wild this year. And to your point, if the Mavs are if the Mavs are sitting on anything, any kind of trade, pull the trigger if Luca's going to miss some time. Like do it. Like do whatever you're waiting on because. This is like this is the time when you need somebody to bring him in, introduce somebody, uh, get him some reps without Luca there too, with with everybody else. I feel like that could help. But uh, the Mavericks did play the rest of the game without Luca, and they got the win, their first win of the season without Luka Doncic. We have to talk about how important this win was <laughs> in so many different facets, and it starts with Spencer Dinwiddie. Kind of kind of starts and ends with him. Thirty six points, nine assists, robbed of the tenth assist with Dwight Powell missing that layup late. Uh, 10 of 18 from the field, so super efficient. 5 of 6 from 3. 11 of 14 from the free throw line. Let's, Let's go. go. Finally got to the free throw line. It's something we've been watching all year. His free throw rate has been down this year. They had the whole incident with Tony Brothers, the referee, when uh, Tony Brothers said something back to Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer Dinwiddie went on that rant about the refs, and then he never went to the free throw line ever again. And now uh, he's awarded for his aggression also. One turnover from Spencer Dinwiddie. Like, honestly, the perfect game he could have played tonight without Luka. I mean, it's one of, if not the best, you know, game of Spencer's career this year. This year. Uh, I want to say career this year. I was going to say, uh, game seven against the Suns was probably the best game of his career. This, this season, um, you know, for him. I mean, for him to, I mean, he was playing, you know, like you said, nine assists in this game. I mean, Huge. he was setting up the offense. I mean, they were double teaming him late. <laughs> and it was just like trying to get the ball out of his hands. And, you know, he missed some shots and stuff late, but five to six from three, we've talked about his three point shooting this year has been awesome. Um, it's just an incredible game. I mean, it, it's wild to see how, you know, different people are joking online, like, yeah, are you in theory, Luca, and you know, all this stuff. <laughs> and I made a joke about, hey, well, the Mavs, you know, get Dinwiddie some help before the deadline. Um, uh, I've seen plenty of people reply to that tweet by saying, Hey, well, they say that Luca is, you know, a, a good free agent addition whenever he comes back. <laughs> you know, he's like a free agent, you know, we just add him to the team. Um, but it is, it was it, wild to see like how the team shifted a little bit. They yeah. played a little bit faster. They played better defense. They did. They uh, ten, um, only 10 fouls. I think that mattered. Well, I mean, you said it stopped and ended with, with Spencer Dimity. I think t- the team defense overall is, just as much of a story in this game as Dinwiddie because you held a Suns team. I know they didn't have Booker, but to 95 points, like you said, they only had that amount of fouls uh, in the game of 10. 10. And I mean, they were flying all over the floor and they were switching. They were, you know, closing out. The rotations were faster. And that's just part of I mean, We know that Luca isn't the most active on rotations and defense. Christian Wood is, isn't the best defender in the world. So like, that's the give and take of, Hey, if you know if the, both of our best offensive players can be out of the game, 
we better kill it on the defensive end. That's how we're going to win. And that's how they won. <laughs> exactly how they won. They, uh, the Mavs also haven't been playing great defense recently, right? We've talked about it. Spencer Dinwiddie had those quotes after the game, like, hey, we just got to defend. They allowed 127 to the, the Wizards, 112 to the Clippers in a loss, uh, 130 to the Hawks, 140, 136 to the Blazers in, back, in back-to-back games. Like, they had not been defending well at all, so it, there was an onus on them. There was a, a yeah. mandate on the team internally as well as from – uh, outside pressures and as well as the coaching staff for them to defend better. And they stepped up to the plate in this game. I mean, the one thing that really stands out to me, so that first quarter, Mavericks go down, uh, Luka Doncic goes down, and then the Mavericks seed like an 11-2 to run to the Suns. Uh, they're down 19-28, to and it just looks like, oh, man, this is going to be one of those games where no Luka, Mavs are 0-6 are are without Luka. That's what it looked like it was going to yeah. turn out to be. They fight back. They fought back in the end of that first quarter. And the Mavericks were a little deeper than the Suns. Suns are missing a bunch of players. Suns aren't just missing Booker. They are also missing Shamit, uh, Campaign, Jay Crowder is, is obviously out and saying lots of things. Um, Jay Crowder. And, like, they, they've just been out a bunch of guys and haven't really figured out the right rotations to, like, try and replace some of them. And so they're missing a bunch of dudes. And so the Mavericks were a little deeper in this game, I thought, and took advantage of it when they took out Chris Paul or took out um, – or took out Aiton, or took out Bridges. And then second, then end of the first quarter, into the second quarter, the Suns scored a field goal at the 2 minute 45 second mark in the second in the first quarter, 10 minute 21 second mark in the second quarter, 7 minutes in the second quarter, and then 3 and a half minutes in the second quarter. Like from the from the 3 minute mark in the first quarter to the 3 minute mark in the second quarter, that's like basically a whole quarter if you kind of just you you mash it together. Four field goals. Like the Mavericks defense really held them to taking bad shots. They didn't allow them to take a ton of threes. Uh, they shot a good good percentage on their threes, but they didn't allow them those mid range shots that they like. They the, the Suns just didn't have anywhere to go to. They made it hard on Aiton. They didn't let him get close enough to the basket. And the Mavs did a really good job in that stretch to play defense well, and that really set the tone I thought for the rest of the game. And give give me two minutes here to do my rebounding spill again. <laughs> this is a prime example of the whole point I made back. It started in last playoffs about rebounding because they went up against a jazz team. They went up against uh, the sun's team and we're like, they can like, they're going to lose the rebounding battle, but they can win. Like they can win this series. Even if they lose the battle, and it's like, you look at total rebounds in that jazz series and the sun series. Yeah. And you're like, Dude, they won both of those series and they got out rebounded by 40, 50 rebounds in the series, which is crazy. My whole point of it starting in the playoffs back then was with the makeup of this Mavs team, it's not the end all tell all stat of looking at rebounds saying, man, we got killed on the board tonight. We just won't have a shot. Or like when you lose, pointing at the rebound saying, well, we're not ever going to win a game when we lose rebounding battle like that. Look at this matchup tonight. You have. No Christian Wood. JaVale is unplayable. And you have Dwight Powell. Luke is obviously not playing. You're going against a, you know, a guy like DeAndre Aiden. DeAndre Aiden gets 20 rebounds. So if you just look at the, the Suns like box score and not even the total score and say, dude, DeAndre Aiden killed us on the board. We can't even, keep, can't even keep him off the board, the glass. He had 20 rebounds. He killed us. And they out rebound us by seven boards and, and they, they still lost. And it's just that's the it's just a prime example of why I do the whole like rebounding thing is rebounds matter. Don't hear that. Rebounds do matter. Wow, he but said it, guy. He said it. It it doesn't determine everything because they got beat on the boards tonight a lot, and they still had a formula to win this game. So that's is just a prime example of that tonight is this type of game. Yeah, you're you, like people confuse your thing as oh rebounds don't matter. No, it does. It it's not everything. They can still win. Even if yes. they get beat on the rebound, they it would be great if they if they didn't get out rebounded every game, right? It'd be great if they could yeah. could could if they had somebody like that. They just don't have the personnel to do that. So with the personnel, rebounding doesn't isn't the end all be all that it, that it turns out to be. You have to change personnel in order to to change the rebounding problem the Mavs have. Yeah. Um, coming up, let's get into how this game was won. How did the Dallas Mavericks pull this out in the end? It was a clutch win. Spencer Dinwiddie was great. Some clutch moments. We'll talk about all that and more coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about FanDuel. They had some live lines 
uh, during this game uh, at one point, and it was interesting to try. It was interesting to watch those and see, um, you know, what was uh, what was changing during the game. They have a couple. Well, it, of, it's cool to see our sponsor, our friends, FanDuel, being the same sponsor of the yeah. Mavs Suns nationally televised game on TNT. Is like, oh, those are our friends at FanDuel. Cool to share the same sponsor. I think FanDuel also partners with the Suns too. It's like, and they have like a brick and mortar store in Phoenix where you can actually go to and play some bets. But we're excited about FanDuel for more reasons than one. To get started, you get $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. You can go put money down on the NBA, on all kinds of NFL stuff for the championship games. You can do uh, college, all kinds of things. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, get $150 in free bets when you place your first $5 bet at FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, Isaac Harris, the Dallas Mavericks get their first win. One in five, baby. <laughs> one in five without Luka Doncic. Uh, this one actually won't count without Luka, I guess, but it should. Um, how did the Dallas Mavericks win this game? We talked about the first half where they go down in the first quarter, seed an 11-2 run, work their way back to a tie game at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the, the first quarter. Second quarter, the defense... Suns only had four field goals like, <laughs> like for a long stretch in this second quarter. The Mavs got some ball movement late. Dinwiddie, 10 points in the first quarter, 10 points in the second quarter. You go into halftime, and Dinwiddie has 20. You're feeling pretty good. You're not shooting the three ball well. Neither are the Suns, really. Uh, Aiton, 12 points, 13 rebounds at the half, but he's 4 of 12. Aiton had a really confusing, weird game, and Suns fans yeah. were all over him, uh, as they probably should be. Third quarter, Josh Green starts instead of Luka. The Mavs build their lead up to 11, their largest lead um, at that point of the game. And it was just one of these where the Mavericks were just outworking, out executing the Suns. Yep. That's it right there. I was going to say the same thing. Like um, they're outworking them, they're out hustling them uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, obviously, on the offensive side of the ball, too. When you look at um, uh, oh, points in the paint, you look at, yeah. I mean, the fact that DeAndre Ayton didn't have, you know, when another team has DeAndre Ayton and they have a guy like Chris Paul who typically likes to get into the paint, obviously they didn't have Booker. I mean, for them to hold those guys to just 36 points in the paint, I thought was huge too. Halftime, Mavs were up 26 to 18 in terms of points at the paint in the paint. I thought that was a really big stat for the yeah. Mavs. Um, you go into the third quarter, Mavs start going small a little bit here and there. They're not they can't play Dwight. 40 minutes, <laughs> 48 minutes or whatever. Uh, I can, st I still think I consider when the Mavs play Davis, you're still playing small. Do you? Mm, I guess. Right? Like, it's just a little, like, sure. I don't know. He plays more like a three to me. Um, <laughs> Mavs started to settle a little bit. The Suns started inching their way back into the game. Uh, you got a couple of really big plays from Dorian. Then Dinwiddie, 30 points through, the, through three quarters. Like, he was going yeah. off. In this Some game. of his threes that he hit in this game was like, no, 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 no. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Classic no, 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 yes threes from him. <laughs> um, you get, uh, you get, then all of a sudden you go into the fourth quarter and this is starting a little bit at the end of the third, but then definitely in the fourth quarter, the Suns start doubling Dinwiddie. They're like, all right, we're not going to just let you beat us. You already have 30 through three quarters. We're going to start doubling. And the Mavericks are ready for that. Like the Mavericks have been playing that all season with these doubles that Luca would get. Yeah, for sure. And, and he made, I think some of the criticism sometimes is his passing or his passing when, you know, he gets trapped or in times of pressure and stuff, but, or, or just, or I just mean, in a pick and roll with somebody like, can you just hit, or just hit, somebody, hit somebody in the paint? That's my, that's my thing with him. <laughs> um, I pulled this up for Spencer Dinwiddie because I know it's kind of deviating from the game, but just going to his season so far, just looking at some, his simple stuff of 16 points a game, five assist a game. He's shooting 39% from three. Um, if that's 40%, if you just go ahead and round that up, there's you know, a few more players, but there's five players in the league that are doing that right now. Just with those, with those stats, Spencer Denwood is one of them. Tyrese Halliburton, Jalen Brunson, Darius Garland, and Steph Curry, man, that's a list. Just five guys, five pretty dang good guys. And yeah, anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. That's yeah. a list combining the scoring, with the efficiency of the three point shot, plus you have to be able to like assist too and like play make. Yeah. There's just not yeah. many players that could put all those together and are doing it at that efficient level. Um, so then let's talk about Dwight Powell. I was gonna say, we, 
you know, let's go towards the end of the game. We get uh, Dinwiddie was getting doubled, and Dwight was the release valve a lot of times in that point. Dinwiddie was was hitting him with great passes. Dwight was making the right decision, kicking it out. The other the other wings were swinging it around, getting good looks across the across the board, and uh, you really saw the Mavericks take. Uh, take advantage of those double teams, and they were used to them. <laughs> they've, they've played yeah. against those four, and Dwight was one of the big reasons why they were able to do that. Uh, four minutes left. Or so <laughs> four minutes left, Tim Hardaway gets that turnover in transition where Chris Paul like steps up on him at the, the half court. Uh, the, right, the play after that, Dwight misses a layup right under the rim that would have been oh, Dinwiddie's 10th assist, and you're like, oh, no. Are the Mavericks going to – just fade into this game. Is they just don't have any gas left. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be shocked because everybody's been playing so much. Possession right after that. Dinwiddie banks in a three <laughs> banks in this three. They go up nine. And uh the Mavs call then the Mavs end up calling a timeout that they're gonna lose with three minutes left. Mavs go into the last couple of minutes here. These are the ending these are the ending plays. Dinwiddie drive. He gets fouled. Dwight gets the Tyson tip out after that. Uh Dinwiddie yeah. loses the ball on that. Chris Paul Wide open layup just runs in, just runs in. Mavs are only up by three. Then you get Dwight Powell drives to the lane, ball hit out of bounds. Phoenix challenges it, it's unsuccessful. Chris Paul gets another wide open layup. Suns are only down by one now. Mavs take another timeout. Then Bullock gets fouled. He hits one of two free throws. Then on the second one, he misses the free throw. Ayton it has boxed out Dwight Powell efficiently he has boxed him out like <laughs> well Aiton is in front of Aiton is between Dwight and the rim and somehow Dwight like angles his body around and like sneaks around DeAndre Aiton gets handle of the ball and Aiton fouls him on that rebound like ta- all talking about rebounding right all your whole thing about rebounding it's the rebounds that matter right it's those effort plays that aren't just about being big it's about just taking the right angle that's why Dennis Rodman is one of the best rebounders ever he wasn't the biggest guy on the court Pretty yeah. big, but he could take the right angle. I will push back a little bit on the DeAndre Ayton box out. He was lazy with it. And, you know, from an early age, you learn well, he about had, box. He had position, maybe I should say, instead of a box. He had he position. Had, yeah. It's just from an early age, you learn about boxing out. It's like, you know, get low, get your butt up into the guy, and push him back. Yeah, and Ayton had high butt disease on that one. You know, eight and seven feet tall, and he had position, and then he just kind of like moved into the paint of like, "Hey, I'm tall. I'm just gonna try to jump him, and get it." And then that's what happened. If he would have like got low and backed, you know, actually boxed him out and pushed the Dwight out, yeah, Dwight's not getting that rebound. But Dwight kept on fighting. It's a story, of Dwight Powell. He chases that thing down, you know, on the on the sideline there, and Aiden gets a you know call for the foul, and Dwight hits two massive free throws, massive. clutch free throws. That I was so happy for him. He gets those free throws. Chris Paul misses a three on the other end, and then the Mavs win the game. But, yeah, Dwight Powell was massive in this game. Fifteen. This is one of those where you can't just look at the box score, right? You look at the box score. Oh, Dwight played 36 minutes. He got 15 points, but only five rebounds, and Aiton got 20, Like you, and he's minus, Dwight's minus four. You can't just look at the box score when it comes to stuff like this, right? Uh, Dwight. I thought Dwight had a really good game. And, like, this is the thing about these Mavericks, like some of these players, like, you know, Dinwiddie or Dor- definitely Dorian, Dwight, they're just miscast, right? It's all about the hierarchy. Like, they're still useful players in the NBA. Uh, we got to mention Dorian, though, before we go. 18 points for Dorian, 12 rebounds, mm-hmm. three assists, a steal, and uh, only hit three of his 10 threes. So it's like it wasn't like he was just bombing from three and hitting all and got really hot from three and scored all those points. Dorian was massive in this game. Three offense rebounds, 12 total in the game. He was a plus 16. Uh, for the Mavs, by far the best plus minus on the team uh, tonight. I, one of my favorite parts of this uh, of this game was from the broadcast. So they're interviewing Chris Haynes, and he's doing like you know, kind of like trade deadline uh, reporting. Scoops. He's like talk, scoops. talk to the Suns, and no, not Scoopy. All of a sudden, and, he's like, <laughs> and he's like talking about the like Suns, what they're trying to do with Crowder, and then he goes. You know, you know, in regards to the Mavericks, I talked to a member (laughs) of the front office uh, tonight about, you know, blah, 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 and how the trade season is hard. There's not much sellers, all this stuff. It's like three minutes later, they like show a a, a cut over to it's Nico and Michael Finley. And it's like, well, it's one of those two guys who told Chris Haynes that. So (laughs) (laughs) we know who it was. (laughs) 
<laughs> it was just funny because it's like, yeah, a member of the front office is like, well, they just showed the two that was there. Yeah, so the the two members of the front office. There. Unless there's some other people there that we didn't see, but it was funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> that was funny. We'll see what happens with the Mavericks if they make any more changes. Uh, I thought Josh Green had a bit, had some, had a great impact in this game. Nine points, um, four rebounds, three assists, two steals. Like I just thought he had a, his energy and just his effort, his quickness and getting in front of guys defending is huge. Yeah. Like that's something that Reggie Bullock has lost a step on that. And Josh Green is able to, to pick up there. Um, Mavs decided to go small on like different possessions late in this game. And they put Josh Green in for Dwight Powell. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, he had a couple moments. He had that fast break play that was really nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of a dunk layup type thing, whatever it was. <laughs> um, he had a you know, play there in the second half where he drove in the paint, did kind of like the scoop layup. It was just really flu. And it's like, this isn't the time. I've seen somebody, uh, a national person, tweet out the clip of that. And it's like talking about the... Um, the growth that they've seen in Josh Green this yeah. year too, which is always cool to see national people talk about that. Um, but that just isn't happening, you know, a year ago for Josh Green. And super happy with him, and I can't stress that enough. No. Um, yeah, there you go. Let us know in the comment section below what's one thing, one reason the Mavericks won this game. The one that stuck out to you. Uh, we will be back. Trade deadline dash. We're continuing on. We'll have a podcast for you every single day uh, going into the deadline. So, Feel for, make sure you're subscribed on any podcast platforms or on YouTube. Make sure you have the bell checked for notifications as well on YouTube. And uh, go check out Lockdown NBA Game to Game. Great stuff all throughout the week. Guys, thanks for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.